All right, and welcome to the second All Candidates Forum hosted by the Nipawin and District Chamber of Commerce ahead of the 2020 municipal elections here in Saskatchewan, but of course here for the town of Nipawin. We're here at Nipawin Apostolic Church. I'm Aaron Schultz. I'll be your moderator for this evening. We've just finished the mayoral All Candidates Forum, and now we shift our focus to the councils. Obviously, we know the mayor plays a vital role, but obviously it's one vote on the council. We have six councillors to elect. We have 10 candidates, and we'll start by introducing from left to right, I suppose. Our first uh, nominee is Stacy Vick. Our second, Bruce Bohowicz. Our third is Joyce Watts. Our fourth is Carrie Skaronsky. Our fifth is John Dempster. Our sixth is Jeff Stewart. Our seventh is Sheldon Chornoka. Our eighth is Jan Baugen. And our ninth is Jean Rusk. We have a 10th candidate uh, running for Nippon Council as Sheila Seiferlin was unavailable to attend this evening. so. She is running for council, but just unfortunately was not able to attend for this all candidates forum. Going through the rules, uh, it was explained uh, before this evening. We're going to go over the rules one more time. So everyone tuning at home, watching on Facebook Live or YouTube can follow along and understand what's transpiring. Each council candidate will have up to two minutes for a presentation. Each council candidate will be given a 30 second time remaining signal during their presentation session. A 10 second time remaining signal will also be given. Microphones will be muted if you go over the time limit. This includes your introductions, your question period, and your closing statement. Obviously, we do not want to mute anyone tonight, but we will have to do it just to ensure the evening keeps on going. If the public, which includes you watching at home on Facebook Live and YouTube, would like to ask questions to any of our council candidates this evening, you can submit questions during the event as we will be taken over Facebook and YouTube in the comments. The que in, during the question period, the moderator will read the questions out loud and direct the questions to the designated candidates. Due to the large field of candidates, the screeners will ensure that all candidates will have equal opportunity to answer questions. Each candidate will only be allowed to answer each asked question once, so please stay on topic. Replies to questions will be limited up to one minute. The timer will provide a 10 second time remaining signal. Candidates may pass comment on any question throughout the evening. At 8.45 p.m. we will begin the closing of comments. It will be one minute each for each candidate in reverse order of introductions. The timer will provide a 10 second time remaining signal. Hopefully we'll be out of here and everyone can be going to bed or whatever else you're going to be planning to do on this Monday evening by 9 o'clock tonight. We did a random draw prior to this evening to determine the uh, order of anyone giving their opening remarks and answering questions. The first winner of the draw order was Carrie Skoronsky. You have two minutes to give your opening remark. Thanks, Aaron. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Carrie Skoronsky, and my husband Larry and I moved to Nippon in 2010. At that time, I opened a cute cut hair design in downtown, and I continue there as the owner and operator, journey person, cosmetologist. Since arriving in Nippon, I have been involved in many groups, including the Rotary Club, the Curling Club, the Evergreen Golf Club, where I have co-chaired the Ladies' Nights, and I still chair the Ladies' Pines Open Golf Tournament for the past several years. And recently, both Larry and myself have joined the Legion and enjoy volunteering there as well. I have appreciated both the challenges and the rewards of serving as a counselor over the past four years in Nippon. I have sat on numerous committees, including the Governance and HR Committee, Protective Services, the regional fire partners, and have served as your deputy mayor this past year, and I have clear reasons for running for councillor this term. I believe in the economic viability and understand that fair taxation is needed to remain progressive. I believe in the positive outcomes that the Heliport project will bring for Nippon and our Samaritan communities, and am I committed to seeing this project through to its completion. I believe in supporting the more vulnerable sectors and will act to bring more affordable housing options to meet the needs of both low income and our seniors. I support the reactivation of the Citizens on Patrol program that supports a safe, caring community, and I believe that the continued rejuvenation of our downtown business core to enhance local businesses while continuing to develop a strategy and maybe a theme-branded approach to strengthen Nippon's visibility beyond our local markets, achieving our vision of an inclusive, vibrant, healthy, and fiscal responsible, responsible Nippon is important. Nippon, where all voices are heard, the community's diversity is inclusive, and Council's leadership is approachable to all citizens, a community where the health and the safety of all residents matter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carrie. Going to second in our opening remarks list, we go to Joyce Watts. Joyce, you have two minutes. 
Good evening, my name is Joyce Watts and I'm looking forward to being re-elected as council. Councillor, for the last four years, it has been challenging and rewarding. I was able to obtain the municipal leadership certificate in the first three years. Plus, I have a professional leadership certificate from the U of R. Policies and bylaws have been put in place to provide protection to town assets and limit the risks for you. Central Park has been made into a municipal reserve which will help ensure the future generation's enjoyment. The tax dollars are working for you in the services and facilities. The Evergreen has become a community center for a number of sports and programs. The Evergreen's food services has changed and is working well and is financially responsible. Business Improvement District was a service that was eliminated and is saving, has saved you more than $380,000. Property tax rates have been reasonable and 2020 there was a no increase due to COVID. The residential tax is about 72%, commercial at 27%. This split has been steady over the last number of years. I would be honored to serve on your on council and represent all of you, our community. Thank you very much, Joyce. Third in the open your remark list, we go to Stacy Vick. You have two minutes. Hi, I'm Stacy Vick. I've lived in this town all my life. I've raised my children in this town. I've been on the fire department for 20 years. I've coached hockey and ball. I'm here for the long term, we'll put it that way. I have a business that we've ran for 40 years and it's sec second generation. I could come to council with honesty and integrity for the citizens of Nipwin. I'm going to be learning the roles of municipal government because I'm sure it's quite a bit different than business as I'm told. And I hope to bring new business to Nipwin and hopefully we can increase the tax base. That's about all I've got. Thank you very much, Stacy. Going to fourth in the opening remark list, we go to Sheldon Chernoka. You have two minutes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sheldon Chernoka. The last two years I've been on council, I've learned a lot about governance. I've also learned a lot of people who don't know who I am or that I've been on council. Maybe they don't recognize me out of my work <laughs> clothes. I will do better. For those people that, who don't know me, I will give you a brief, a brief uh, bio. I moved to Nippon in 2008 with my wife Janice and my three uh, kids, Maphony, Morgan, and Liam. Uh, I've been a fire. Or I've been a member of the Nippon Fire Department for seven years. Before that, I've been a member of the Wadena Fire Department for five. I've coached baseball, hockey, and soccer. I've always been community-minded. I'm presently employed at uh, Sask Energy, and I have been for the last 22 years. I would like to see more businesses and industry come to Nipwin and create job opportunities and tax revenue. Tourism is a big part of Nipwin's economy, as is agriculture. We have many government agencies in town, and lots of people live in Nipwin. <coughs> excuse me. Lots of people live in Nipwin, but they are not employed right in Nipwin, as their employment is elsewhere. They choose to live in Nipwin because of what the town and the surrounding areas have to offer. Nipwin has a lot to offer. We are a full service community. We have a new water treatment plant, a new swimming pool, a beautiful golf course, awesome fishing, camping at our great regional park. Tobin Lake is just a few minutes away, snowmobile trails, junior hockey, two rinks, a curling rink, two outdoor rinks, a skateboard park, and not many other communities have their fairgrounds in the heart of their community. There are many more things I could add to this list. But you cannot cut taxes and expect to have the same level of services. We need to be efficient on how we do things and how we use things. And that is something we all can work on in the community. We need to keep on lobbying provincial and federal governments, apply for grants that... Thank you, Mr. Shornoka. Two minutes can run by quite, quite quickly. Thank you, thank you very much. Going to fifth in the opening remark list, we go to John Dempster. You have two minutes. Mr. John Dempster, you have two minutes for opening remarks. 
Good evening, my name is John Dempster. I grew up about an hour and a half uh, southeast of here in a small farming community, which was part of the reason I decided to retire in Nippon. I've lived around here for the last 30 years, <clears throat> working in the auto industry, most of the time working for Nippon Chrysler. I uh, spent a lot of time with the Nippon Hawks, from billet to uh, board member and vice president. Uh, coached lots of hockey in Nippon and grew to really like it here. Uh, Nippon was also my wife's hometown and as well both of my children were born here and I want to see this town, the town of Nippon, prosper and grow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. John Dempster. Six in the opening remark list, we go to Jeff Stewart. You have two minutes. Good evening. My name is Jeff Stewart, and I'm running for re-election to town of Nippon. Quick bio, I'm your exercise therapist that works up at the hospital there. I run the cardiac rehab programs. I'm an active member of your Kinsman Club, have been president, have been just about everything on that club. Uh, I'm a soccer coach, uh, although some would say not a very good soccer player anymore. Uh, <laughs> I've chaired the Community Development Committee, and I'm also the rep for the park, right? Nippon is quite fortunate to be right next to a beautiful river and forest, and we need to con continue to promote what we have here, like amazing cuisine, golf, hunting, fishing. And as for economic development, everyone running for council wants to grow and support business, and I'm no different. But I think one of the best ways we can assist our businesses is to have very minimal to no tax increases. This will prove to be difficult, but we can prioritize projects and find efficiencies during bu budget time. With all the additional COVID pressures being placed on the taxpayers, this, this is something that council must deliver on. Um, lastly, Nippon, I would like to see us continue to be an active partner in health and safety in our community such as expanding our facilities through partnership with healthcare and education to improve access to programming for everyone, young, old, wealthy, everyone, right? And even people with less means. Let's find ways to get people living in this town, not just living in their homes, but living in the, to, in the community and being a community, right? So to end, we also need to focus on the safety in our community, and there's multiple ways we can approach this. We've all heard from before that we can definitely work with our RSMP, and I think we do need to do that. But I also think we need to work more upstream models, like reduction of poverty and helping with addiction in this community. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jeff. Going to seventh in the opening remark order, we go to Bruce Pahowicz. You have two minutes. Hello, my name is Bruce Pahowicz. Pretty much born and raised in Nippon, been here Pretty much all my life, I guess. Uh, married, three children, have two great grandchildren, and uh, yeah, but member of the Nippon Fire Department. Been on that department for 34 years. Just one of the things I've done most of my life, just to support my community and what I believe in. I believe Nippon is a very good place to raise a family and a good place to grow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. Going to eighth on our opening remark list, we go to Jan Baujan. You have two minutes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jan Baujan. I was first elected to council in a by-election in 2017. I love Nippon and all it has to offer, and that's why I'm running again. My family moved to Nippon when I was five years old. I moved away for five years to go to the University of Saskatchewan and was lucky enough to return here following the completion of my degree for a great career and to start a family. Being a counselor allows me to give back to the community that I love, a town where I always feel a sense of community, security, and belonging. I have an extensive background in a number of areas that support and have supported council decision making and bring a unique perspective to the table, including 15 years of community development and program management. I've developed strong and meaningful partnerships between organizations, chaired interagency committees, and have an understanding of the needs of different populations in Nipwin, from infants to young families to seniors, no matter what their income. I believe in the, sp the spirit of our community and the volunteerism that supports our projects. We've seen many projects in Nipwin flourish solely due to the work of volunteers. 
Over the, over the past few years, I volunteered on numerous volunteer boards and committees, including the application, development, and successful operation of child care spaces, um, and Chase the Ace, which is obviously well known to us more recently, uh, which was also supported by a couple of other candidates here with us tonight. I believe in supporting our community to move forward on downtown revitalization, creating safe spaces for children, families, and seniors, and continuing tax incentives to support development. I will continue to support equality, safety, and building a sense of community as I have over the past three years. I'm proud to be from Nipwin and even prouder to serve as part of town council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. And to our ninth and final opening remark, we go to Gene Rusk. You have two minutes. Good evening, my name's Gene Rusk. I was born in this town. I've been self-employed for about 52 years. And I'd like to see more business and come up with some new ideas for council for the area. Thank you. And thank you very much, Gene. And that concludes our opening remarks portion of tonight's Council All Candidates Forum. We now go to the question period. And just a reminder to all of our candidates, you'll be only allowed a one-minute response, and the timer for a 10-second warning will happen at exactly that 10-second mark. We go to our first question. It's targeted to all candidates, of course. What changes would you like to see if you are elected to Council? Kerry Skaronsky, you have one minute. What changes would I like to see? Hmm. I would like to see definitely more business, but I would like to see a more approachable council, a more open and approachable council, I think. That, I think that's all. More business and definitely more approachable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kerry. Joyce Watts, you have one minute. What I would like to see for this council going forward to complete what we have started, because we did some good work, but the other thing that really interests me is to do more marketing for Nipwin and a better communication strategy for uh, bringing in new business. If we market ourselves and we are prepared with our infrastructure needs and we know what we have to offer investors, we can bring them here. But until we know that, we are limited to what we can and and I do enjoy shopping local it is a priority of mine and uh, I believe if we support our local businesses we will have a vibrant commercial and industry in Nipwin thank you very much Joyce Stacy Vick you have one minute I would like to see an approachable council begin with, I would love to see a way to bring in new business to expand our tax base. Um, well, those are the two main things that I can think of right off hand. I believe that the economic development officer would be crucial in promoting NIP1. And I do really, really believe, strongly believe in you shop local and NIP1 will take care of himself. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sheldon Chornoka, you have one minute to respond. I'd like to see um, the continuation of the work that we have started. Start some good things. I'd like to see, see the community, community garden, garden projects grow a little bit. Maybe some green initiatives with some of our public buildings. Um, I would like to see us work on our tourism and our communication to get the word out there that Nipwin is a great place to live, play, and work. And I think that needs to be said. Thank you. John Dempster, you have one minute. I too would like to see a very approachable council. Uh, we need, as I said in my opening statement, I want to see the town of Nipwin prosper and grow. And in order to do that, we need to attract new business to help it prosper and grow with more tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, you have one minute. Thank you. Um, we've all talked a lot about business, and I think that's an important theme that we've heard tonight, that we need to continue to support business that we have and try to grow business into the community. And that's what I believe, that getting the right economic development officer in place and then learning and working through that administration to be able to get that done. 
My other thing is, a favorite quote of mine is, your environment dictates your behavior. It's one of my favorite quotes. So if we build a Nippon where people want to live and want to grow and want to bring their families, that alone will create the economic development that we're looking for. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jeff. Bruce Mahalich, you have one minute to respond. Same boat. I think we need to attract some kind of business or industry and keep our young people in Nippon instead of moving away to bigger centers for looking for so they can have a career. And I'm not sure what kind of industry we could try and attract, but we have to start looking at something. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Baljan, you have one minute to respond. Um, <clears throat> well, I agree with a number of things that were said. I also want to include um, that I'd like to see us move forward on uh, some of the things that we've just begun, including our active transportation plan that prioritized certain areas for sidewalks and sidewalk improvements, implementation of the next stages of our traffic study, um, review and impl implementation of the downtown revitalization plan, and uh, continued partnerships with businesses, uh, neighboring RMs and neighboring First Nations community will be um, essential to continue on. Thank you very much, Jen. And finally, Jean, you have one minute to respond. I'd like to see some more sidewalks be finished and pray we don't blunder too badly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean. And thank you to all candidates for answering that first question. Another all candidates question, would you be open to a reduction of speed limits on residential streets? Kerry Skaronsky, you have one minute to respond. I definitely would be in favor of reducing our speed limits to 40 within the town limits. I think right now our speed limits are 50 and I think people go 60. So if we reduce to 40, maybe we could get people to slow down a little bit. Um, I would like to say that part of the traffic study did put a four-way stop at the corner of my business and I've noticed a huge slowdown in traffic on that corner. But I would definitely be in favor of reviewing that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Joyce Watts, one minute response. Well, I've thought about the 40 versus the 50. I know you go to a number of communities and they do have the 40 speed limit. And I think in some areas, 40 makes sense. On the outside, in the, uh, on the truck routes, we, we need our 50 and the, and the 60. But basically, I think people just need to follow the law and slow down. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a one minute response. I think that we should leave the speed limit at 50, actually. I, if we lower it to 40, it, well, we're going to get a ticket for 50 instead of 60. But if people just continue to abide by the law and stay at the right speed, I think everything will be fine. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sheldon Chernoka, a uh, one-minute response, pardon me. the same. I think we just need to uh, follow the law and be, and it should be enforced and that will also help rather than lowering it. I think if we just kept it the same and enforced it, it would help. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the speed limits in that one are just fine the way they are. We have reduced speed limits in all the areas where it's necessary, school zones, hospital, playgrounds. Uh, once again, people just obey the law and drive the speed limit, everything would be just fine. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one minute response. Well, working in the therapies department at the hospital, I see the results of sometimes more high speed collisions and accidents. So I would support a reduction of speed. There's good statistics out there that can show anybody why this is important especially in residential areas. If you hit someone going 50 to 60 kilometers an hour, you're probably seriously injuring, if not killing that person, compared to hitting them at 40, 30. It's very, very, very different outcomes. So I agree with everyone here that we do need to still follow the law, but in residential zones, there's no need to go 50 kilometers down by someone's house, especially without sidewalks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Behoach, a one minute response. I think the speed limits are good the way they are right now. Same thing, you just have to abide by the law and not be stupid. 
just pay attention to the traffic signs and yeah. And there are a lot of young drivers, but everybody's got to learn how to drive. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Baljan, you have a one minute response. So I think a decision like this needs to be made based following a review of data, like um, uh, my colleague uh, Jeff talked about, um, and community input. I don't know that it's necessarily something that just comes to the council table. I think there's a big process to it. Um, having said that, I think there's lots of other potential that was also discussed here tonight, where there's different, potentially different zones in different areas. We already have playground zones in other areas. So I do think it requires a bigger review rather than any kind of knee-jerk decision. Thank you very much, Jan. And Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. I think the speed limits aren't too bad. I think we should follow the, the traffic study to get that recommendation done. Thank you. Thank you, Gene, and thank you all candidates for answering that question. We now go to the comment section on Facebook Live and YouTube, and once again, thank you everyone from their homes or wherever you may be watching for tuning in to tonight's All Candidates Forum for the Nippon Municipal Elections as you prepare to vote for a council and a mayor. The first question from the comment section, uh, what are your ideas to make Nippon a safer community? Carrie Skaronsky, you have a one minute response. I would really like to see the reactivation of the Citizens on Patrol program. I would like to see some younger people. We need to engage some youth, some younger people. While the program is still kind of active, the, the volunteers are extremely aging, and I'd like to see some young people get involved and keep that program going. I think that safety is a huge issue, and I think it's a real problem in Nippon, and I think the Citizens on Patrol would, would help that problem tremendously. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kerry. Joyce Watts, a one-minute response. Could you repeat the question, please? Yep, of course. What are your ideas to make Nippon a safer community? Well, I've always felt that Nippon is pretty safe. I, I was uh, raised in Nippon, and I could go and play wherever I wanted to. And you know what? I still do. But I do recognize that there are some elements out there that are causing issues. And sometimes if you deal with homelessness, poverty, those kind of things that are, and the drug uh, problems in town, that might help with a lot of the safety issues in Nippon. And we should be, as citizens, on patrol at all times regardless. If you see something, report it. If you see something and they need an ambulance, phone. If you see somebody drinking and driving, phone. I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a one-minute response. I agree with the Citizens on Patrol. I do believe that all of Nippon, as a whole, has to do their own part at watching out for each other. I agree with what the other members have said, that if you see something going on, report it. Phone someone. Just be an active part of it. If we don't, just one group isn't going to solve it. Everyone as a whole has to take care of this problem. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sheldon Shrinoka, a one-minute response. I do agree with the other comments about citizens on patrol. We need to get that more active. There are always uh, underlying issues sometimes to some of the crime that is happening in, in our town, and some of those um, underlying issues need to be corrected, and that is something... Um, that council can't do, but everybody in the community can do their part to report uh, crime if they see it and report anything that looks suspicious because the police cannot do anything if they don't know what is happening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, I think there seems to be a, a concern as to the safety of our citizens in this town right now. Since I decided to run for council, uh, I've been approached by a number of people, especially the older sector that used to walk the streets, go for their walks in the evening, and now they're too scared to do that. So th there must be something there. I know one individual said that they'd been accosted once and they just refused to leave their house after dark now. So I, I, I'm not sure what avenues are open, but I think there is something that needs to be done. 
Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Thank you. Lots of great ideas have already come out, and I agree with most of them, citizens on patrol. I kind of put a different hat on this, and I kind of see this through two lenses. First, the acute lens, which is the ta what's happening right now, and that's if you see something, say something, right? Be that good community, that good neighbor that's going to say something and going to help out our community when it's happening at that time. I also see things through a chronic eye, which means a long-term pro pro problem. So that's your addictions again that I mentioned earlier, and that's your poverty. And then working with NEOS, working with the hub, working with community development, working with the housing authority, kids sport, uh, Nippon Nutrition for Kids, working to break down these barriers so we have less crime through other means than just enforcement as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Pihowicz, a one-minute response. Yes, I agree with this. It's Citizens on Patrol program. But I'm not sure how, how many members there were in that group. I was never aware how many active members there were. Does anybody have an idea? I don't know. But they can only do so much and only report so much. I think the biggest problem is the RCMP are limited to the member accountability. They're, they're overworked, is what I believe. And they can only do so much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, Jan Baljan, a one-minute response. Um, so a couple of things were touched on. Um, that we do have in town that are working to address the reduction and the prevention of crime. Um, one is the hub table and the, the town is active on um, um, both the hub steering committee and the hub table. It's an interagency group that works to support, directly support individuals. We also have the alternative measures program um, and we need to continue with partnerships like this to address poverty, the poverty and homelessness and racism that contributes to crime. If we, don't under, if we don't address the underlying um, issues, we won't ever address the problem. Thank you very much, Jan. And Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. My ideas and thoughts have been covered. Thank you very much, Gene, and thank you to all candidates for participating. Moving on to the uh, questions being supplied from Facebook Live and YouTube comments. Thank you very much for everyone tuning in again. A number of candidates have spoken about an approachable council. How would you go about making yourself available to our citizens? Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one-minute response. I actually work with the public, and I'd like to think that I'm always available to our citizens for a cup of coffee, a haircut, or just a visit. I think I'm, I think I'm extremely approachable, and I'm, I'm very friendly, and I know a lot of the people in the community, within the business community, and I, I'd like to think that I am approachable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kerry. Joyce Watts, a one-minute response. Well, I, I think I can see some of the issues of uh, an approachable council. I, I, no, I did notice on the website, none of our phone numbers are on, on the website. And so that makes it hard for a taxpayer or a residence to get in touch with you. However, I've had people come to my office and I never turn anybody away. We talk about the issues and possible solutions. I bring what I can forward and I do listen to social media as well and pick what needs to be addressed because there's always an underlying issue in what is being complained about. And I do believe that people need to come forward with solutions along with their criticism if there is any or just the pat on the back sometimes is nice to hear too. But absolutely we need to get our names on the website so we can be approached. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a one-minute response. I think that everyone on council should be able to be approached at any time. There shouldn't be any hesitancy, like, or just come and talk to me. I haven't been on council, so, but I hope that, and I've discussed many problems, I guess, with different people not on council, but again, you should be a part of the solution, not the problem. That's all I've Thank you very much, Stacey. Uh, Sheldon Chernoka, a one-minute response. <clears throat> I'm always uh, open to a conversation. If anybody has the, a conversation or a question they ask, I usually try to answer it the best I can. And hopefully people know that I am on council now and they can uh, come forward if I am reelected. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Sheldon. A John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, anyone that's known me for the last 30 years knows that I'm very open and approachable to any reasonable questions or response. So um, if, if we're not allowed to talk to anyone in council, well, then come and have a cup of coffee with me. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you very much, John. Going to Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Thank you. Just to echo everybody else's comments that, you know, yes, I am approachable, and please come and speak to me about any issue, to be honest, right? I'm a frontline healthcare worker, and I am on the front line seeing a lot of people, not in an acute setting, but in a chronic setting, so a long-term setting, and that does allow a lot of people to have a, a lot of access to me to be able to bring up their concerns, which I thus bring up when I have the avail availability to do so. So, yes, I'm open. I would give my phone number right now, but I think I'm going to get dinged. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just pass the mic. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, A one-minute response regarding availability. Yes, I think all the taxpayers should be able to approach with any kind of questions or concerns they have. I'm not on council yet, but I've been approached lots already just because I'm running for council and I can only answer so many questions. Cause this is all new to me. I'm just learning. But yeah, I think people should be able to approach council with their concerns. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, Jan Baljan, a one minute response. Um, I think at any given time, lots of us have been approached and do our best to be approachable in community locations. Um, as a council, some of the things we worked on were um, open houses, um, open council and standing committee meetings that anybody's welcome to come to and be part of. Um, we do need to work a little bit more about um, bringing our plans and our ideas to locations where uh, people already are, such as a hockey game or something like that, as opposed to trying to get people to come to us. We need to go to the people, and that will make us more approachable and, and um, give the opportunity for more people to ask us questions. Thank you very much, Jen. And Jean Rusk, a one-minute response. If the people want me to do something for them, they'll have to talk to me. Then we see where we can go. Thank you very much, Jean, and thanks to all candidates for participating again. Going to another uh, comment question, uh, what are your thoughts on the homelessness issues and improper housing issues in Nipawin? Kerry Skaronsky, you have one minute. I think that we have a really, really big problem with homelessness in our community, and I, I think that we need to develop some, some low-income homes, um, multi-unit duplexes, fourplexes, apartments, we need some affordable housing and we need it really, really bad. I think our homelessness is a, is a huge problem in Nippon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Uh, Joyce Watts, a one minute response. Uh, homelessness is an issue and I noticed in the paper not too long ago that uh, Oasis has purchased a home to help with that, to help with the couch surfing. One of the things is we don't see it on, on the streets like we see it in other places. When I was in Victoria, at 6 o'clock, they start setting up their homes on the street. So fortunately, we're not seeing it, but we do have the problem, and we need to look at that. And our Northeast Outreach Support Services is also helping with that side, and that's, uh, as a council, we do fund them from our fee-for-service. So we are supporting a solution. Thank you very much, Joyce. And Stacy Vick, a one-minute response. I do believe we have a problem. And I also believe that we do need more affordable housing. But it's back to the root of the problem. If we could deal with our addictions and such like that, if we could get a handle on those things, that would probably be a place to start as well. I've been in the town, actually I've watched some old friends go that route, not in Nippon so much, but taking a different route. Um, not because they're in trouble in that respect, but of addictions and just 
alcoholism, things like that. So it is a problem that has to be addressed. My time's up. Thank you very much, uh, Stacy. Just a reminder that the timer provides a 10 second, 10 second remaining signal. So the first bell typically means uh, 10 seconds remaining. Uh, going to uh, Sheldon Shornoka, you have a one minute response. Uh, could, you, could you please uh, repeat the question, please? Uh, what are your thoughts on the homelessness problem and improper housing issues in Nippon? You have one minute. Uh, homelessness is not just a problem that we have in Nippon. It's, it's throughout our province. It's, out, it's throughout our country. But we need to lobby, I guess, government a little bit more and try to uh, get some funding for uh, housing and affordable housing for, for everyone. Not just the homeless, but for seniors and young people. But we need to start somewhere. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Uh, John Dempster, a one-minute response. I, I know there is an issue. Uh, and I'm not sure why or where it comes from, but uh, I know that coming home from a visit at 12 o'clock at night and there's people gathered in the bank entranceways trying to stay warm, there must be some way to uh, get affordable housing for them. I'm not sure what avenues the town would have for that, but it needs to be looked into. Thank you very much, John. Uh, Jeff Stewart, you have a one minute response. Thank you. Um, Stacy said this perfectly, that a lot of homelessness is stemmed from addictions. And that, of course, is an area I've already talked about, about how we can start working with that, not just start working that, but continue the, the, the partnerships with like the Oasis Center, Kids First, uh, Kids Sport. Uh, there, there's so many different avenues, depending on the age of the, the person that we could work towards. I've always been an advocate for affordable housing, and, and I see that as different from low-income housing. Affordable housing is going to be set to a standard that's safe, and now that we have bylaws in place, we can make sure that those housing is also in the state that allows people to, to exist in those housing and live there safely. So it's not just always about the housing that we need to bring in, it's about the housing that's here too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Behowich, a one-minute response. Yeah, I wasn't really aware of the homeless housing effect, or how many people are homeless in Nippon until I was doing some work at the Oasis Center a few weeks ago. And they gave me some numbers, and I was actually quite shocked. And we do need some affordable housing and try and find jobs for these people, too, so they can work for their housing. That's all I got. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, Jan Bowgen, a one-minute response. Um, homelessness is about more than providing homes. Um, it's not about, a, for, it, it, a piece of it is about affordable housing, but there's, there are other pieces around safe housing. We need to make sure that our, our, everybody in town is living in a safe house. Every, every man, woman, and child deserves to be safe in their home. They deserve to have smoke detectors. They deserve to have carbon monoxide detectors, all of those things, and we've done some of those pieces. We also need to talk about the hard to house, the people that, um, individuals that for one reason or another are, are hard to house, hard to keep in housing. Um, and we need to continue the partnerships that we've been working with um, to, to support programming for individuals like that. Um, now, it's more than just addictions. It's also poverty and racism that, that contributes to uh, homelessness. And uh, once again, addressing uh, those concerns requires more than the town. Thank you very much, Jan. And Jean Rusk, a one-minute response. I was homeless at one time, too, and I decided I didn't like it, and I went to work. Thank you very much, Jean, and thank you to all candidates again for participating. Going on, a tri-municipal agreement used to exist that shared tax revenue. Would you be in favor of renewing this tri-municipal agreement? Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one-minute response. I'm not sure I'm familiar with the tri-municipal agreement for taxation. I know that we have a tri-municipal agreement where we meet with Tisdale and Nippon or in Melfort and discuss projects that we can work on together, but I'm not sure that I'm actually familiar with that. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Joyce Watts, a minute response. 
Uh, yes, the tri uh, municipality agreement was in place prior to, and it was actually the RAM of Torch River that drew out their name out of that, and then shortly after the RAM of Nipwin. Now, the problem with that, there isn't a lot of tax base for any municipality to be able to share the the amount of, I think it was like 60% uh, would go to the, let's say, let's take the diamond mine, for instance. The RM of Torch River would retain the 60% and the other 40% would go to the other two partners. But you can see just in Nipwin itself, our tax base is limited. And if you have to share it with other people, it's hard to do. And I think think really what needs to happen is rec uh, buildings, those costs should be shared with the RMs. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacey Vick, a one minute response. I'm not sure on which way to go on this question because of, we do need our outside communities to, to thrive because the RM of Torch River and the RM of NIP1 do contribute to the town of NIP1. I honestly can't say whether it's a good idea or a bad idea on that because of we need the outside communities to support us to make us thrive as well and it, it's a reciprocity because generally we give to them, they give to us. Uh, the idea of, of tax sharing, as I said, I'm not sure. Thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, Sheldon Chernoka, you have a one minute response. I believe there's some room for, um, to work with our regional partners in, in some aspects. Uh, tax sharing, I'm not sure that would work just for the fact that they have other wants and, or needs, I guess, in some, some instances. So I believe that we do need to work with our regional partners, and I think there is, is a spot that we can uh, work with them, but I don't think it would be taxes necessarily. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Uh, John Dempster, a one-minute response. I'm not sure of all the ins and outs of how tax sharing would work with the RMs, but... I think the town of Nippon has to look after itself before it worries about anyone else. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Where we are currently right now, I don't think that that's going to work at this moment. But what we could do is show some good faith and start to develop some decent partnerships with our neighbors. And uh, I would love to see more of a shared economic development portrayal of the Northeast, the Twin Lakes economic development almost. Our partners doing well in attracting business, that's going to turn around and focus very well on Nipwin. And then those agreements make more sense when we have that partnership in place, that tax sharing and everything. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Behoach, a one-minute response. I'm sorry, I'm just not familiar with this uh, subject, so I'll just decline my question. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Bojan, a one-minute response. Um, so I do recall the tri-municipal municipal agreement about sharing taxes, and there, one of the other partner municip municipalities withdrew from it. Um, so if anything like this was to happen, it would require a lot of thought and a lot of development and a lot of partnership prior to it ever occurring. Um, there's likely a lot of other ways that we can partner on things um, like uh, like what was said earlier around marketing the entire area um, that would support every municipality in our area. Thank you very much, Jan. And Gene Rouske, one minute response. Tax sharing is quite a shuffle of money and I hope it don't get lost. Thank you very much, Gene, and thank you to all candidates. Moving on, back to the comments. What are your thoughts on Indigenous engagement? Carrie Skoransky, you have one minute. I'm in favor of continuing with the Indigenous engagement, reconciliation, and I believe that as council and as citizens, we have to work together and that all citizens and all people are very important 
in the community in all aspects, whether it be business or social programs or the downtown beautification or the community gardens. I think everybody, if everybody in the community works together, the community will be better. We're better together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Joyce Watts, a one minute response. I believe in working with all people, including the indigenous. We are all treaty people, and we need to remember that. We have to honor our commitment to them, and having them work beside us would be a, a great thing, and we need to work with them. And we have, we've been going out, or been meeting with the Cumberland House Cree Nation, and the first uh, Red Earth Cree Nation, talking about possible urban um, center in Nipwin in the business area. That's going to take a lot of work and it'll take a lot of time, but it probably will come at some point as, they, as we become closer together. Our town strives on the con our economy strives on their business and we need to also give back to them. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a one minute response. I believe that we should work together because it, it is, as Joyce and everyone else has said, it's an integral part of NIP One's economy. And honestly, besides that, it, it's just the right thing to do. We, uh, there should be no greater and no lesser. Everyone should work together as a group, as a whole, and build it together. That's what I have to say. Thank you very much, Stacy. Shelton Chernoka, a one minute response. Yes, we need to be a more inclusive community, and that is going to take some more work and some more time. And I think it is, we need to, we do have, we did, excuse me, we did start a, a communication with Cumberland House and, and Red Earth, but we need to. To get back to that and work on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, the Indigenous community in our surrounding area is quite huge with the town of Nippon. They, uh, they support us quite well. Uh, I think we really do need to work hand-in-hand -hand with them and make things work on a good basis. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Thank you. When we look at economy, um, definitely it's absolutely necessary that we are reaching out to our First Nations and being an active partner in not just the benefit of Nipawin, but the benefit of their livelihoods as well. Reconciliation is as much a journey as, as, it, as it is for an individual, right? So being able to challenge your own beliefs and, and views on that and then learning about things like residential schools and then trying to honor that ancestry and the treaties that were signed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce, behold you. I think we are working together. I think we still have to keep working together and improve things. There's a long way to go. They do support our community quite well. We all know that. And, uh, and it's not only indigenous, it's all races. We're all equal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Belgian, a one minute response. So I've worked on reconciliation efforts in town for the past at least six years. Um, I believe that um, as a person, as a town, as a province and as a country, it is um, top, top of, uh, it's, it's one of the most important things that we can work on at, um, to move forward um, in a way that supports and heals everybody. Um, we as a town need to enhance our cultural knowledge and we need to enhance our cultural history so that people in town are aware of the rich history that we have here. Um, we need to work and continue to partnership with our, our surrounding First Nations communities um, so that we can learn and grow together. Um, and once we do that, we will enhance life for everyone in town. Thank you very much, Jan. And Jean Rusk, a one-minute response. My opinions are up for public opinion. Thank you very much, Jean. And uh, thank you to all candidates for participating.
Moving on, what are your suggestions for downtown beautification? Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one minute response. For downtown beautification, I think it was very, very important, the reenactment of the Community in Bloom program. Um, and I noticed that lots of businesses have participated and there's lots of positive comments that have come from that. Um, I'd like to see um, a program and joint effort continue with the Handiworks group where they do the kind of the community cleanup, you know, to keep our downtown looking, looking nice and, and attractive for people who come to visit, especially outsiders who come to the community. But I really think Community in Bloom has been a huge asset for the beautification of our downtown area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Joyce Watts, a one minute response. Well, I think uh, some of the money that was spent on the previous bid, the 400,000 could have been wisely used as grants for the businesses to beautify their own uh, for, uh, outsides because they're the owners of the business. They know what they want. And I understand there is a group that meets regularly and they come up with their own retail um, systems or, or games or how to promote each other. And they're doing a very good job. And that should be rewarded and acknowledged. Nipwin is a beautiful town. Anybody that has come through has told me that. It's so clean, and I think that's important. And yes, the handiworks would be a good example. That was part of the bid that did work, and I think that should continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a two minute, pardon me, a one minute response. I agree with the communities in Bloom. I also support, I'm not sure how to go about it, but I support any business that is trying to work on their storefronts to make it more, I guess, beaut or to beautify them. I do really like the, what the Handiworks people did on the lots downtown. I think it's great. It, it's uh, almost, I'd say, whimsical. Uh, I don't know how to actually improve on that other than getting together with, I am a business owner but not downtown, and getting some feedback from the downtown merchants as to how they'd like to go about doing this. Thank you very much, Stacey. Uh, Sheldon Chornoka, a one minute response. I think we need to start with uh, talking with the downtown businesses and in the business sector and I think there's a group already started uh, between the town and the, the chamber and a few businesses. I think if we let them do their work and maybe an economic development officer, if we get one in town here again, uh, they can work and bring some stuff to the table. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Uh, John Dempster, a one minute response. Could you repeat that question? Of course. What are your suggestions for downtown beautification? You have one minute. I'm not sure on that. The, the things that have been done there now have definitely improved it with the bandstand and, and uh, the curling thing they had in there. Uh, we got those nice garden boxes by the water tower. Um, I don't know how you would really improve it without looking at it a little deeper. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one minute response. I just have to say that I just love Nipwins downtown, mostly because I just love being able to walk downtown and having the storefronts right there. Most new developments don't look that way. When you go to a new mall, what is it? Your parking lot, and then you got the store in the back, right? So Nipwin can really work on being a very beautiful place. So I think we need to put money into this. I think that we need to come up with a grant program that has some money every year and then build, work with our build businesses to build up a facade and to improve the frontage of all the buildings, number one. Or if that's not what they want, making sure that they are they can access access the tax incentives for all the, the for improving their business and their storefronts as well. So lots to be done there for sure. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Behoich, a one minute response. Yeah, when you drive down through Main Street, I think Nippon does look pretty good. The town does a good job put their flowers and their and their planters they put out 
but a, a tax incentive for the some businesses to improve and clean up. There's not too many places, but there's a room for improvement on a few places. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Belgen, a one-minute response. Um, we have a report, um, um, a study that was completed on downtown revitalization um, that was, uh, it's been under review for a while now. I think it would be good to review that, um, take an opportunity to review that report with businesses and see which uh, suggestions they think would be um, most useful, um, most appealing. Um, in addition to that, we have started uh, Communities of Bloom in Bloom again. I'd like to see that grow. Um, we've also started some work on the boulevard down by the RCMP station, um, so that, will, that area will also be um, improved next spring. Um, in addition to that, we have an active, trans or active transportation study that was um, done with focus groups, included active transportation downtown. We know that if we can get more people walking, they are more likely to stop in stores, and so I think it'd be worth reviewing that again and uh, trying to get some more support for that. Thank you very much, Jan. And Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. I haven't given this subject any thought yet. Thank you very much, Gene. Thank you all candidates for participating. Moving on, what do you think about the streetlights in town? Do we need to move to brighter LEDs or more lights in general? Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one minute response to lead things off. Of course we need to go to more efficient LED, LED lighting. That's just the way of the future and we need to save energy as best as we can. Um, they run more efficiently, they provide better lighting and absolutely, I'd actually like to see some um, change street lights, some, some cuter, cooler, trendier lights rather than the just plain old SAS power lights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Uh, Joyce Watts, a one minute response. Absolutely, there needs to be more lighting. That provides a safer community. You can see that in some of the residential areas too. When I went to visit a client one evening, I couldn't believe how dark it was. But Unfortunately, this, the street lighting is controlled by SAS Power. So each and every taxpayer here, start phoning them up and advocating to have some more lights in town and get those LED light bulbs in there. They are starting to work on it. They just need to get it done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a one minute response. Yes, I would love to see LED lights too. I believe that SAS Power have their own issues right now, and I'm sure that they'd like to put LED lights in all the places, but as we find in NIP1, they have certain restraints too, and just certain areas that uh, they can't spend a bunch of money on. They did upgrade this year down, the, uh, down Center Street. I don't know what that cost was to them, but I agree that LED lights would be great, and more light would be better. Thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, Sheldon Shrinoka, a one-minute response. Yes, I would like to see uh, LED lights in, in Nipwin, but SAS Power, they own the lights, and if we switch over to LED lights, the, the cost savings, this goes back to, to SAS Power. It doesn't go back to the town, and every light that we do have in town costs the taxpayers money. So I would like to see more lights, and I would like to see LED lights, but the cost savings for the taxpayers is not there as it goes towards SAS Power. But it is a nice bright light, and if you do see lights that are out in town, we pay for them regardless if they're on or off. So please uh, let SAS Power know that they're not working. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Uh, John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, I think LED lighting is an excellent idea. As someone mentioned, uh, some of the residential areas are pretty dark, so it would be nice to have that extra brightness, although it's, uh, I know from changing from regular light bulbs to LED in the business, uh, it's pretty costly. So um, even saying that, though, it, it still should be done. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Well, I'm going to make this six for six and just say, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's, uh, let's, let's improve those lights in town. The ones down Center Street are just excellent. When you're driving where you have the new ones, you definitely know where the new ones are at. And then you know exactly what happens when you drive beyond the new ones, right? 
So we do know they're owned by SAS Power, and they are doing a certain amount every single year, and they're looking at the ones that are starting to rust out at the base, and they're trying to get to those ones first. Over time, we're going to get them all done, and then just because they're, they're newer lights and LED, the town will be brighter just based on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Behovich, a one-minute response. Yes, lighting, we walk quite a bit at night, and yes, lighting would be, brighter lighting would be nice, LED lights would be nice. But then we're not paying for it, SAS Power is paying for it, so I'm not sure where we can go from there. It's up to them, not us. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, Jan Baljan, a one-minute response. So I think it's been mentioned a few times, um, the streetlights are SAS Powers, and so um, it's not necessarily the town's responsibility or ability to change the bulbs in them. Um, they are changing some. They are changing some light standards. Um, when we look at downtown revitalization, there's certainly potential for um, light standards to be changed in some way, which would uh, um, likely mean LED bulbs would be in them. We have supported, and I definitely support, um, moving to um, any energy efficiencies that we can find. Um, we've done it in many of our facilities, and we've continued to advocate, and will continue to advocate, to um, SAS Power to get ours changed sooner rather than later. Thank you very much, Jan. And Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. My area of town, I find the lighting quite satisfactory. Thank you very much, Gene, and thank you to all candidates. Moving on, commercial taxes have risen year over year. Would you continue this trend? Kerry Skaronsky, you have one minute. I would like to see commercial taxes not increase. I would like to not see them increase year after year after year. But unfortunately, that's the way it is. The percentage of residential to commercial just dictates that. And our, we sat down with a common goal of reducing the base tax for residential properties, and we've obtained that. And this year, because due to COVID, we didn't have a tax increase. Um, I do believe wholeheartedly in fair taxation to promote um, growth. Without, without having increased to our taxes, we can't grow and prosper as a community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. And Joyce Watts, a one-minute response. Well, this is an area that I love because it's numbers, being an accountant. But I did analyze from 2014 to 2019, and the commercial tax rates, part of the increase is because of the tax um, assessments were higher, and that is controlled by SAMA. That is not controlled by the town. So as buildings go up in value, they do have to pay more tax. But we did cut the minimum tax or the base tax for commercial as well as when we did the residential. And from what I see for the tax assessment splits, it is about 17% in 2019, coming from a 20% in 20, or 2014. So there has been some reduction in that sense. And we are keeping our split 70-27. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. Stacy Vick, a one-minute response. I would love to see the taxes not go up. But the reality of everything is we need a broader tax base in order for that not to happen. So there's going to have to be some spending and some restraint. I. Well, honestly, I, I wouldn't want the taxes to go up, but it's probably inevitable. Thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, Sheldon Chernoka, a one-minute response. As uh, Joyce alluded to, um, some of the, the tax raises are out of our control. It, it's um, based on tax assessments, so um, I would not like to see taxes go up, but uh, it seems I like to try to keep them at a minimal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, I would like to see taxes disappear altogether, but we know that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, taxes are one of those necessary evils that have to be there. Without the tax base, our, uh, our town can't operate. So uh, excessive increases aren't necessary, but unfortunately, there has to be increases 
at certain times. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Increases to the taxes are inevitable, but with the new COVID, I think we as a council need to work really hard in the next year or so to keep, to keep those to a minimum to none at all due to all the, the pressures being put on the taxpayer. Now, as for the commercial taxes, 70, 27, and, th and then three, as long as we can maintain that, I'd be happy. It wouldn't, be, wouldn't hurt my feelings to see the, the commercial go down a little bit, but then that simply just means the residentials pay more money. So it's where do you put the pain, right? Do we put it on the residential? Do we put it on the commercial? But the pain has to go somewhere. So it's, it's never an easy thing to talk about taxations. And uh, budgets are councils, and they're, they're hard to make those hard decisions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Bruce Behoch, a one-minute response. You all, taxes aren't going away and they're going to increase every year, no matter residential or commercial. It's just a part of life. There's nothing you can really do about it. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Belgian, a one minute response. I'd also like to see um, um, tax increases be as low as possible. That's something that I think we all focused on a lot, um, especially this past year. Um, which is why we funded any tax increases out of reserves. So nobody in Nippon saw, uh, was required to pay any kind of tax increase. Um, I like keeping the ra ratios the same. The 70-27 split, I think, is important. Um, I think it's also important to note that um, through the budgeting process, we're also looking at um, building reserves paying down debt, and that's something that we've done very successfully over the last three years. Um, and so as long as we can continue to do that with minimal tax increases, then I, I think that's what we need to do. Thank you very much, Jan. Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. Taxes are a historical problem. It's council's duty to see if we can keep the two raised raise to a minimum. Thank you very much, Gene, and thank you to all. Moving forward to the comments, uh, from my understanding, there are still significant funds left over from the Business Improvement District. What would you like to see done with this money? Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one minute response to kick things off. You know, I never really thought a lot about it, what we would do with it. Um, I, I don't think that there's a lot of money. There's some money left over from the Business Improvement District, but I don't think that I've had a clear thought as to what I'd like to see done with it. Sorry, but thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Joyce Watts, a one minute response. I have a definite answer. There isn't a lot of money that was actually left over in, in the bid um, bank account. That money is being brought into the town of Nipwin to go against the costs that we had incurred in at least three years of 380 over and above the town square. So it'll go back into the reserves to be used, hopefully, for some other venture for the downtown improvements. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. Uh, we go to Stacy Vick now for a one minute response. I as well, I had no idea that there was any monies left over and I don't know the amount left over, but I do believe that it should go toward the downtown area because that's what it was set up for. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sheldon Chernoka, a one minute response. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, what was the question again? Uh, one more time. Uh, from my understanding, it is still significant funds left over from the Business Improvement District. What would you like to see done with this money? You have one minute. I'm hoping that the, the group that is um, now uh, formed between the town and the, the chamber and, and the businesses are maybe uh, able to use that leftover money. I'm not sure how much money is left there in a fund, but I don't have the numbers in it uh, in front of me, but I know there is some left, so maybe they could use that and uh, support some of the businesses around town, not just downtown, but around the whole town. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. John Dempster, a one minute response. Well, as someone that is not yet on council, I wasn't aware there was money left over. So um, 
I'm hearing that it's going to be put into a reserve for another venture. I think that's a great idea. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute response. Oh, the bid. So we're talking about it again. So, <laughs> our <laughs> yes, there, there's a little bit of money left over. I can't remember the the number. I, I agree that you know it can be put into reserve to be towards downtown revitalization. And you know the council at the time can come up with their own plan and decide what that's going to look like along with the business community. So at least at least be a little bit of start of money there. Good plan for it. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Bruce Behovich, a one-minute response. Yeah, I'm unaware of the amount of money or how much there is or whatever, but it would make sense to put it back into reserves or put it back into the capital fund. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jan Baljan, a one-minute response. Um, so there was, uh, there was some money in an, in an account. Um, but certainly, yeah, I think it makes sense that that money is put towards downtown revitalization or something that supports our downtown businesses. Thank you very much, Jan. And Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. I think any money left over from there will, be fun. will find some good people for it. Thank you very much, Gene, and thank you all. Going back to the comments, I think this one might be more based towards the incumbent councillors, but we'll definitely ask the thoughts for all our candidates. Is it fair that a home-based business pays $190 for a business license, but a similar downtown business only pays $50? Why is it this way? And provide your thoughts. Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one-minute response. I think that's completely fair that a home-based business should pay more for a business license as they don't incur a separate set of, of expenses to operate that business. They operate it from their home and they have to live there anyway. Um, as a business owner, we pay rent, we pay utilities, we have phones, we have parking lot cleaning, sidewalk maintenance, flower planting. We have all these business, all these business expenses over and above our home expenses. So I think it's more than reasonable that a home-based business should pay more for a license than a downtown business. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Joyce Watts, a one-minute response. I have to agree with Carrie. It is um, the fact that the, inf or the extra expenses, the structures that they have downtown or in the commercial areas does cost more. And the incentive of business license is to fill up our downtown. So if we were to make home-based licenses cheaper, we're, we would have more empty buildings on our downtown street because it is easier to work from home as we found out in the covid months thank you very much joyce stacy vick a one minute response i agree that it it is fair that it is 180 dollars for home-based business for those very reasons the people downtown or in the industrial area actually have buildings that they have to maintain and if you're working out of your home, I'm not dissing any business at all. Be very clear in that. But there are a lot more costs incurred if you do have a separate building, store, depot to maintain. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sheldon Trinoka, a one-minute response. As the three uh, candidates uh, said before me, Yes, uh, there's more costs uh, incurred by uh, downtown or businesses that do not run out of their house, so I do think it's fair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, I think it's more than fair. Uh, if you look downtown at the businesses there and the amount of taxes that they have to pay just on their property and their building and the upkeep to it all, like $190 for a home-based business is very minimal. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, you have a one-minute response. Thank you. I will echo the same comments. Downtown, they have more expenses to be able to, to incur and uh, compared to a home-based business. So in the current model, I can see the logic based on that. And going forward, though, you know, I would just love to see every business have a license and there to be no fee period. They already pay taxes, right? And just make it no, no fee. Businesses can get a license, that way we know who's doing business in the town and we can work towards promotion. They're already paying taxes and we're talking $50. Thanks so much, bye. Thank you very much, Jeff.
Bruce Pihowicz, a one-minute response. Yes, I agree. Uh, Home-made business, the amount is fairly reasonable. I run my business out of the back of my half done, basically. So, yeah, it's economical for me. And versus having a building downtown, there's no way I'd be able to afford it. Thank you very much, Bruce. And Jen Baljan, a one-minute response. Um, I concur with the others um, that it is justified in the additional costs that um, commercial businesses pay downtown in uh, either commercial tax or rent or whatever the additional costs may be. Thank you very much, Jen. And Gene Rusk, a one-minute response. No comment. Thank you very much, Gene, and thanks to all for partaking. Moving on, uh, it's a little bit of a lengthier question, so bear with me here. What would you say about a cap on rent being charged by landlords or a tax rebate for landlords that provide affordable rent, perhaps fundraising or rebates for renters? Kerry Skaronsky, you have a one-minute response. Can you repeat that? Okay, it is a lengthy one, so apologies in advance. What would you say about a cap on rent being charged by landlords or a tax rebate for landlords that provide affordable rent? You have one minute. It's not that I don't agree with it. I'm just not sure that that's for our table. I'm just not sure that as, as a municipality, that's for us to decide to offer, re to, to suggest rental caps. I don't think that that's probably for us. I think that's more of a, probably a provincial thing. Um, as far as maybe a tax incentive to provide some housing, I mean, it's something I guess we could look at, but I, I, really, I really am unsure that that's for our table. But thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Joyce Watts, a one-minute response. I don't think the town is in the business of renting, so it is a responsibility of the Saskatchewan province. They already have rules on how much a rent can increase, and that's where this uh, question belongs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. Uh, Stacy Vecca, one minute response. I agree that uh, I think this is a provincial government issue that we don't have anything to do with rental caps. When, when there are rental caps on it, it's kind of like buying a car. You can buy the Econo or you can buy the luxury. So I don't know how you can put a cap on it. Things. You can have a three-bedroom house, you can have a six-bedroom house. And again, I don't believe that it's municipal government to decide that. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sheldon Chernoka, a one-minute response. Yeah, I don't uh, believe it's a municipal uh, issue. I believe it's a provincial issue. And I would like to see safe housing and affordable housing all in the same sentence. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. John Dempster, a one-minute response. Well, that, <clears throat> that's something that you just can't do. It would be like telling the cement company how much they can charge for a yard of cement or the car company how much they can charge for their vehicles. Uh, if someone feels the rent is too high on that building, don't rent it. It's that simple. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Jeff Stewart, you have a one-minute response. I agree. A provincial mandate, rent is typically dictated by the market. We do have safety nets, though, in, for people with housing. We have our Nippon Housing Authority, which does look at income and does charge you a rent based on the income that you, are, that you currently have. So if in need of housing and low income, you can you know, apply to the housing and, and go that way, Nippon Housing Authority. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Bruce, behold, you have a one-minute response. Yeah, I, I agree with everybody else. This isn't really a municipal subject, I don't think. Thank you very much, Bruce. And Jen Baujan, a one-minute response. Um, we do have social housing through the Nippon Housing Authority that has certain uh, rental caps and um, uh, rent based on income. The market determines private housing rent rates, and um, those are private landlords that the munis or that the town does not dictate uh, their what their rent is. Um, having said that, if there are um, unique solutions to supporting people in paying their rent. There are communities or there are tables 
interagency tables and partnerships, some of which the town is part of, that could certainly look at some of these ideas. And so, um, not to completely close the door, but it is not the town's responsibility, um, but it certainly is worthwhile bringing it forward to other um, interagency committees. Thank you very much, Jan. And Jean Roske, one minute response. I have no thoughts on this question. Thank you very much, Jean, and thank you to all for participating. And that concludes the question portion of tonight's All Candidates Council Forum, hosted by the Nippon and District Chamber of Commerce here at the Apostolic Church here in the town of Nippon. We head over to our closing remarks section. So we're going to do this in reverse order of the opening remarks. So instead of going one through nine, we're going to be going nine through one. So we're going to begin with one minute opening remarks to Jean Rusk. You have one minute for your closing remark. Pardon me. I really don't have anything to say. Thank you very much, Gene. Uh, we're still going in reverse order. You have a one-minute closing remark. Jan Baljan, you have one minute. I'd like to begin by thanking everyone for joining us online and thanking the Chamber for offering this forum tonight um, and giving us the opportunity to be heard in a safe way. The, the pandemic has required everyone to be creative and find ways to operate in a safe manner, and the Chamber definitely rose to the challenge tonight. I'd also like to thank the Apostolic Church and my fellow candidates for putting their names forward and committing their time and effort to the betterment of our town. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank the people of Nippon for putting their trust in me over the past three years. I look forward to serving you again in the next term. If I'm elected, I'll continue to work for everyone in the community. I will, I will continue to fully commit my time and effort to projects that support our town and support our people. I'm asking for your confidence as we move ahead and, and we move forward through these unknown times into better days ahead. Thank you for your time and your support on November 9th. Thank you very much, Jan. Bruce Behoich, a one minute closing remark. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody for my time here. I'm new to this and this is new to me, so we'll see what happens in a week. Thank you. Fair play. Thank you very much, Bruce. Jeff Stewart, a one-minute closing remark. Uh, thank you for considering me for another term on town council. And of course, if elected, I'm going to continue to work hard on your behalf to provide good financial governance and direction for this town. I, I can say a big thanks out to the, to the chamber. They're all smiling back there. And of course, to yourself for moderating. Very well done. As well as the Apostolic Church for having us here. What a great venue. Um, it's a privilege to sit in this chair and represent you, and I fully understand and tr the trust the voters have placed in me over the last four years, and I hope I can earn that trust again. Thank you to everyone to put their name forward and created such a lively and respectful debate tonight. Nippon is a wonderful place, and you guys all showcase that. Uh, it would be an honor to represent Nippon again as councillor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. John's, John Dempster, a one-minute closing remark. Uh, <clears throat> over the years I've been, lived in Nippon, I've been asked a couple of times to uh, run for council and decline because of the business I was in, kids in hockey and figure skating and other boards that I was on. Now I'm retired, I have the time to devote to do a good job instead of part of a job. Um, I think that I can do a very good job for the town of Nippon and the people in it. Um, I look forward to serving this town. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. And Sheldon Chernoka, a one-minute closing remark. I'm asking for your support and your vote to continue representing the citizens of Nipwin. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the Chamber for putting this on and the Apostolic Church for giving us a venue to be heard. Yourself for moderating. It was a, it was a good night. And I'd like to wish everybody that good luck that is uh, running. And... Um, come out and vote on um, November the 9th. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. And Stacy Vick, a one-minute closing remark. I would like to thank the Chamber and the Apostolic Church for this venue. I would also like to promise that I would act with honesty and integrity in council. I, these one and two minute, these questions for one and two minutes, they were huge, probably not even the tip of the iceberg to answer it pro properly because the wheels are still spinning. 
I do really, really, really want people to come out and vote. That's the biggest thing. Come out and vote, because this is your freedom. This is your choice. So please come out and vote, and hopefully you will vote for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stacy. And Joyce Watts, a one-minute closing remark. Thank you. Uh, my experience in business and being a chartered professional accountant, I do understand business and budgets. And Nipwin is rich in industry. We always say we need more industry. Well, agricultural in our region is a huge industry. It has several spin-offs like honey, parts, the crop inputs, the fuel, the farm equipment around construction, logging, tourism, and outfitting. <clears throat> in closing, I wish all candidates well on election day. It takes a lot of community pride to serve our community. I have that pride and I do hard work and I am committed. Those are my values in my deepest part of my soul. Thank you for your consideration and yes, go out and vote. Thank you very much, Joyce. And we end where we began. Uh, Carrie Skaronsky, you have a one minute closing remark. Thanks, Aaron. On November 9th, I'm asking for your support. I can assure you that as a business owner, I have an extremely flexible schedule. I have been very committed to my council duties and will continue to be if I'm elected. I was born in business. After all, my family owned the local grocery store. So therefore, I've grown up with a clear understanding of community and financial responsibility. I understand the needs of all people and being approachable is what I bring to this table. I'm just an ordinary, hardworking person who wants the very best for all of our citizens while maintaining reasonable taxation. I would like to thank the Nippon and District Chamber of Commerce and Pastor Jordan and the Apostolic Church for organizing this forum. I would like to thank you all for your time and would like to wish all of the candidates best of luck in our upcoming election. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie, and thank you to all candidates for participating, and ultimately, thank you, the viewer at home, the residents of Nippon, for watching tonight's All Candidates Forum, the mayoral forum, and ultimately the, council's, the council forum. It's been a lengthy evening, but thank you if you joined us part ways or all the way. A big reminder, of course, uh, obviously, voting day is Monday, November 9th, uh, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you didn't have the opportunity to partake in the advance polls or mail-in ballots, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday, November 9th is your time to make sure your voice is heard to ensure who will be the mayor and the next council to lead the town of Nipawin into the near future and beyond the coronavirus pandemic. In the meantime, thank you to Nipawin Apostolic Church for hosting. Uh, thank you very much to the Nipawin and District Chamber of Commerce for running this forum and making sure everything goes uh, as smooth as possible. My name is Aaron Schultz. It was a pleasure to moderate. Uh, get out on and vote on Monday, November 9th, and wherever you may be watching tonight. Enjoy your evening and get home safely. <laughs>